I'm Ben Folk. Uh, I'm the CEO, President, Chairman of Excel Energy. Well, you know, energy is fundamental is fundamental to society and uh, electricity particularly. If you think about it, it drives every modern convenience that we have. Um, just imagine a world without electricity for a few days, much less a couple weeks, and, and I think that paints a picture. Um, so it's vital to society, but it's also ever-changing. Every day you learn something new in the energy industry. Uh, and. Uh, and energy is going to change over the next 10 to 20 years. So it's, I really think it's an exciting place to be. Well, you know, I think I'd have to start with my mother, um, who uh, was a single mom for a number of years and uh, managed to always be there for her kids. Uh, so she's an inspiration. Um, when I think about my business career, to me, the mentorships were really people that gave you opportunities to, uh, to, to potentially fail, uh, but nevertheless gave you the opportunities. So, you know, you want to have a chance at the plate, you can hit a home run or you can strike out, but if you're not on the field, you're not in the game. So, to me, that's really what mentorship's about, and I've been fortunate in my career to have those opportunities to sink or swim. And fortunately, I swim, but uh, you got to be given the opportunities. I uh, started out in accounting and finance and uh, uh, was just always looking for opportunities to develop my skill set and, and actually some of my background when I first came into the energy industry was used to diversify uh, and get out of uh, some bad decisions that utilities made in the 80s and so I was really you know, involved in the energy industry but on the periphery uh, but then I had an opportunity to uh, coming to Excel Energy and um, work in various areas like uh, the trading area, the retail services area, and ultimately through Treasury and the CFO function. Um, so uh, once you get in the energy industry, you never get out of the energy industry, in part because it's so interesting. There's a number of things we're doing internally. We want to be um, better able to serve our customers uh, and we're doing a number of programs with that, some of which involve making sure that it's easy to do business with us. The other is making sure we do everything we can to keep our energy affordable for our customers. That's more internal based. Um, where you can really see our efforts and what we're trying to do with our energy portfolio. I'm really proud of the fact that since 2005, Excel Energy's reduced carbon emissions by 30%. Um, and we're going to be at uh, 40% by 2020. And we have plans in place to reduce uh, carbon by 60% by 2030. And the key is we're going to do that at a price that's uh, compatible with uh, or comparable with what a more traditional plan would be. So how are we doing that? Well, one of the things we're doing is taking advantage of the great resources we have in our own backyard. Uh, last year, we launched a program we call Steel for Fuel. And what that really involves is, is taking advantage of, of incredibly rich wind resources in our backyard, combining that with a production tax credit at the federal level, which starts to expire, putting that together and, and investing in wind and having the recovery of that wind come from the fuel savings that customers will receive. So we can actually lower our customer's bill while investing in wind with all the, the environmental benefits associated with that. It's really, I like to say it's the, it's the fuel of tomorrow and it's on sale today and we're making sure that we take advantage of it. So over the next five years, we're gonna spend about $18.4 billion investing in our grid and our port generation portfolio for the benefit of our customers and 3.5 billion of that will be in renewables, the steel for fuel strategy that I'm talking about. If you look at where we're located, from Minnesota all the way down to the panhandle of Texas, that really uh, intersects perfectly with the best res wind resources in the country. And then solar resources very strong in the Colorado, Texas, and New Mexico area, and, and solar is becoming even affordable in places like Minnesota. So it's the resources there, 
How you package that, how you work with your stakeholders varies a little bit jurisdiction to jurisdiction. But the bottom line is stakeholders all have different, in different localities, have different perspectives. But one thing's clear, they all like to save money. And what we're talking about with Steel for Fuel works because it saves customers money. Well, it's, a, it's about wanting to serve our customers better. And our customers expect reliable, safe energy. They expect it to be affordable, but increasingly, they want it to be more convenient, they want more choices, and they want their energy to be cleaner. And really, we've embraced that uh, commitment, or we've, we've adopted that commitment years ago, which is the reason why we, we've been a wind leader now for 12 years running. Um, but it's just more than that. It's what, listening to your customers, having a commitment to serve them better every single day, and technology plays a big part of that as we move forward. So, um, so we're excited about it. Our customers are going to benefit from those sorts of technologies in two different ways. First, probably a way they won't see, and that's the technologies that the digital technologies that were put onto the grid. And I think what that'll do is, is allow us to have a more resilient grid, uh, a grid where we can spot problems and solve them quicker, a uh, grid that's more efficient in terms of energy usage, uh, and a grid that's ultimately more reliable. So that's kind of before you get to the meter. Those same digital technologies uh, combined with uh, the new metering technology, et cetera, that you and I just talked about, um, will uh, allow our customers to have more choices than ever. Uh, maybe they want to have time of use billing. Maybe they want to understand their energy usage uh, on a more real-time basis. They'll, there should be an app for that. Uh, we want to have an app to make it, it more convenient to talk to them, to understand better if, if and when we do have an outage, when they can expect power to be back up. Uh, it allows, I think, for a different suite of products that if our customers want it, we can now give it to them. So, um, the, the digital technologies, these advanced technologies are going to serve our fundamental core offering better and I think it's going to allow our customers to have more choices uh, and more convenience than ever before. Yeah, it's going to evolve, um, but when I think about the goal of the business model, it's, it's clearly to, to meet our customers' energy needs and to do so in the, in the most efficient, affordable, reliable way possible. So I don't think that changes. But the model does transform over time because we're going to introduce increasingly more technologies. And, you know, we like to say we're going to move, technology should move at the speed of value. And that's kind of how we apply that to this, this evolution. So I'm really excited about what we've seen in the evolution of wind and solar and how that's uh, increasingly become, depending on where it's located, you know, a, a prime time, economically viable alternative. I'm excited about where batteries may be in the future, really excited about electric vehicles. Um, and we'll put all that together, but never lose sight of the fact that we always know that our customers want clean, affordable, reliable, safe energy. And hopefully, they'll continue to look for us to uh, to meet those energy needs. Now, technology is going to evolve, our business model is going to evolve, the goal won't change. But we also need, I think, to see an evolution on how we work with our regulators. Uh, our regulators have a job to do, as do we. But if we're going to serve our customers better, if we're going to give them more choice and more options, we're going to have to work better than ever with our regulators so we can give them those options and those products and those services quicker than we do today. And to do that, we're really going to have to do that in a policy framework that recognizes that customers want more choice, but that a customer's choice, their individual choice, shouldn't be paid for by other customers. That's kind of a guiding principle. I think it can be done. I think the regulated utility model is very viable going into the future, and um, I think the future is bright. Well, first of all, I think um, I think we can market ourselves better. Um, I think it's an exciting industry. Uh, but quite frankly, early in my career, I didn't consider you know, the utility industry very exciting. Um, and so I kind of fell into it uh, through a number of different things we talked about. 
but it is an exciting industry and, and I think increasingly more and more younger generation is attracted to the utility industry because they see the importance of energy and they're excited about where it's going. Clearly as an environmental leader we get a little bit of an edge with that. But I think it's also really important that we, we market to a broader array of, of, of potential talent or developing talent than ever before. So I'm really proud to tell you uh, we're working with our communities, for example, right here in Minneapolis in, in a program called Step Up, where we allow or give the disadvantaged youth, youth an opportunity to actually internship while they're in high school, real internships, by the way, uh, and see what the business world's like. Because sometimes I think we take it for granted that, you know, oh, well, kids should know there's a great opportunity to work at Excel Energy or any other energy uh, company, but they don't. So I think it's incumbent upon us that we give them those opportunities and start early. Um, I'm also really excited about the opportunities to hire uh, people with the right stuff. And increasingly, we're focused on value-based hiring. Uh, and I can't think of a better way to do that than, and find the right stuff than with our military vets. So, uh, we've made it a big effort in our recruiting efforts to reach out to, to, to veterans and hire them into the workforce. We've been very successful with that. They, they are great employees. All right, so once you get the talent in the organization, how do you keep the talent in the organization? And I think that's making sure you have a workplace where people like to come to work. Uh, they want to work hard. They want to be part of something bigger. And that, to me, is the energy industry. And if you can develop that culture where, um, where, where people get excited to be at work and recognize that their good efforts are going to be rewarded, I think that's a winning combination.